Now, Simpler has the ability to warp audio inside of it, and this is helpful if you're using samples that you want to have sync to a particular tempo and perhaps change the pitch of, but not lose the timing of it or not, not kind of lose the tempo of it. And as I mentioned in a previous video, when we drop a sample in, let's just look at this really quickly. I got a breakbeat sample. Perfect example of something that you may want to keep the tempo of. So with a drum beat like this, if I drag it in and I play C3, this is what the original sample sounded like. But if I play different notes, let's play an octave higher, it pitches the sample up, but of course it has to play it back faster. If I play it an octave lower, pitches the sample down, but of course it has to play it back much more slowly. So this isn't really gonna work if I wanna be changing the pitch of this, maybe throughout the course of my production, but I you know, I want to keep it playing back at the same tempo. So this is where the warp feature comes in. So let's turn the warp function on. And one thing I do want to point out really quickly, if you've already warped an audio clip, remember I dragged it in from this clip right here. I already went in here, set a warp mode that I thought worked well. I placed warp markers and it memorized all of that. When I turned warp on, it kept all those settings for me. It might not be so obvious here because it doesn't show warp markers showing up, but if I went in and had to move any of these transients around, it actually did that for me because again, it memorized how I warped it in that audio clip. So now with this warped, I can play different pitches on my keyboard, but it'll stay at the same tempo. And the quality of the playback will be somewhat dependent on how you set your warp mode and your various warp settings. So with this warped now, I can actually go up here where I've got this MIDI clip because here, what I wanna do is change the pitch, but I wanna keep the tempo the same. I want the consistent flow of this drum beat, but something I liked about this loop, and the reason I chose it is because it has this kind of tonality to it. There's kind of like this hum. It's like pitchy hum to it, the way the kick drum plays. And let's take a listen to this. Now it looks like my velocities are dipping, so I'm getting quieter and quieter here. Let's actually go back really quick, take the velocity down to zero, take the volume up to zero dB, just to hear it at full volume. So you can hear I'm getting that tonal shift in the drum loop, but the tempo is staying the same. Cool. So there's an example warping a drum beat, but let's look at another example, which is if you maybe have either an instrument part or a vocal part or some kind of musical part that's not necessarily a drum beat, that's not necessarily percussive, but something that maybe you want to create harmonies with. So I'm gonna delete this instance of Simpler, we'll stop this clip, and let's throw a new Simpler in. And I'm gonna take a vocal, this one here, let me just play it for you first. It's a vocal loop that, again, I had to go in there and do some finicking with warp markers just to get it to warp evenly within a two bar time window here. So let's take a listen to it. Music keeps me dancing. Music keeps me dancing. If I turn the metronome on, that should be Music pretty well in dancing. time. Music keeps me dancing. Okay, cool. So if we just take this sample and we drag and drop it into Simpler, and we leave warp off, and I try to play a harmony. Let's play C3, because remember, that's the default root key. Music keeps me dancing. That's how she sounded originally, unwarped. If I try to do a harmony, let's play maybe C and G. Music keeps me dancing. The harmony's Music there, but it's not synced up, right? That G is playing through a lot faster than the C, so it sounds like you know a chipmunk that has no sense of timing is trying to sing along with this actual singer. Music He's just trying to like beat her to the end of the punch here. So let's turn warp on. And again, because I had gone in and set these warp markers, changed the warp mode to complex pro, adjusted the format and envelope controls, it memorized all that. And it brought that in when I turned warp on. So you can see all the settings here, complex pro, envelope 256, format zero. Now, if I play C and G, keeps me dancing. still get a little bit of a chip monkey tone because I'm pitching it up fairly high but we get this nice harmony and it's staying perfectly in time. Let me turn her down a little bit. Ooh, that wrong note. <laughs> There's our perfect fifth. And we could do like an octave. 
a trick I'm hearing in a lot of pop music nowadays is this kind of like octave down version of the vocal under the dry vocal. So this is a really easy way to achieve that. So I'm just playing a C3 and then a C4 below it. So you can create really nice harmonies with warped audio. This is, like I said, great for vocals, great for any sort of instrument parts. If you have, um, you know, single note synth hits or instrument hits from guitars or pianos or whatever, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.